Hey, what's up? It's Kit. Time for another video and today I am going to show you how to be able to cast big bait far from the beach or the pier or the jetty, wherever you're fishing. Okay, now, um, it's the summertime, so kind of hot. <laughs> We're going out and I'm taking my family with me, but I can't expect them to be casting lures out with me in the rocks. So. You know, it's bait fishing in the comforts of the car near the beach or in a friend's house near the beach where, you know, the rods are just a few steps away. Now, this is actually one of the, the hooks that I'm using. I like it because of the shape and how low profile it is, okay, relative to its size. This is a VMC 9255. Our leader is going to be lighter than this. But actually, you know what? This is one of the leaders I actually use to catch uh, stingrays with. And it is a zippy. I use 80 pound, but this whole thing, you can scale down to suit your needs, okay? And to suit your tackle. This is a number four or a four ounce sinker, okay? Now, uh, before anything else, thank you very much to our friends at Suffix for helping us with this video. Alright, now, when I'm fishing and one of the biggest concerns is to actually just see what's in front, I usually tie on a sinker, okay, and see exactly what's in front. Okay, wait for about 30 minutes and if there's no action, there are no bites or no nothing, and then I would know that I would need to cast far. Okay, so for me, one of the, one of the uh, biggest things is actually see what's in front of me first. And especially if I'm just using two rods, you know, uh, one of them is going to be cast close and the other one's going to be cast some distance now um, the thing with that is if you do get a bite in the rod that's far away it tells you that the fish are actually kind of a distance away and you what you want to do is to be able to maximize that distance especially with big bait if you're after big fish so what I do is get a length of wire and believe it or not with this particular thing I have done this with paper clips now the big paper clips okay uh if you're in the bind you're you could actually do that now i take my sinker i pull the line now no matter how especially with the bank sinker okay no matter how tight you put you you put your knot on there's always going to be a space in the middle just like that now this is a size 16 or a gauge 16 galvanized wire okay so that's not that small okay now um it just tells you that there's a gap there okay and that's fine that now i learned to utilize that for this particular um use all right so all you have to do is just fold that in now the next step is to actually have one of these wrap around the sinker line and and the mono so it doesn't really matter which one you want to wrap okay it, it could be the shorter one it could be the longer one it doesn't matter now, the most important thing here is that it wraps the line okay now with this one you can see that it's actually on the bottom what we want is to have those two parallel all right now that i have that i will clip it and then just form now galvanized wire is easier to work with than stainless steel so as you can see here i'm just you know just as long as you have a firm grip you could actually just wrap it around like so okay now once it becomes kind of hard what you can do is actually get your pliers to help you out you just bend it like so okay the most important thing there again is to have your mono wrapped together 
with the wire okay until you have it down okay like that that's fine okay it doesn't have to be a super clean job okay like that so you can see that it's actually attached right there okay now what you want to do after that is to make a loop or a hook right there okay you can make it long you can make it short doesn't matter here's an example of a long one all right so you have a hook now the hook doesn't have to be that long so what you can do is actually cut that a bit shorter like so okay just like that now to use this what you want to do is actually wrap your sinker line on that hook now you can see that it actually moves with your nylon or your uh, hook leader or your your sinker line okay so when you've baited this up put that there okay as now as you can see it's also although this is a 70 hook okay it's act its profile is actually kind of slim all right so we have this and then as soon as it hits the water or you introduce slack on this okay hold on like that okay and as soon as it hits the water it just pops out okay so all I did there was to actually stretch the line just like how it's being cast okay and then slack is introduced as soon as it hits the water okay so the the, the hook just pops out as you can see okay now I'm just gonna drop it so that you can see it okay as you can see there it's separated now remember that it still has to drop okay so see it's separated okay so when it hits the water because of the ten the surface tension okay this actually kicks back and the hook would just disengage okay so let's try that as you can see the hook just disengages now remember this has bait so when it hits the water the resistance of the sinker hitting the water would actually kind of push the hook out okay and when that happens boom your your bait then separates from your your lead okay now look at this okay I'm just gonna tie that just like that okay okay just like that and then I'm gonna drop it so you can see it's separated and when this has a bait it would drift around while your sinker stays on the bottom okay so if you're clipping your bait like this it's gonna go really really far and it's definitely gonna go farther because normally if you don't clip your bait what happens is that this part here when it bends out and faces you and your sinker goes out this actually creates a lot of drag you know it doesn't matter if your bait is wind resistant or not just because there's something on your hook and it's trailing it will create drag so with this one okay as soon as it hits the water it separates and you'll be able to cast farther now that's very useful when you're fishing in the summer when the water is warm when the water is warm there's less oxygen in the water and if you can reach water that's colder that has more oxygen fish will tend to feed more there okay and then um, even in the winter time when you're fishing and you're able to reach the distance that not a lot of people can reach it means that you're actually fishing water that's less pressured and this is the reason why you need 
to be able to actually cast fart. So, I hope this is something that you've learned from. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.